And they get even bigger in the backfield. Max Mang, the tight end, helping to block. All doors closed, like the front of the old Carnegie Library here on campus. Avery Young helping push back Sean Tucker, third down. I'm going to count the, the, the references today, Mike. Somebody's playing bingo I'm, out there. I'm going to keep you in line. The doors, by the way, do open now. That's just a way of showing your age, depending <laughs> on how long ago you were on the SU campus. No score first quarter. Inside nine and a half minutes to go. Syracuse and Rutgers meeting for the first time since 2012. Back in the old Big East. It's DeVito back to throw. He finds Tucker escaping from the backfield. First down. This is man coverage in the back end. And Badukasi's got Tucker man to man. Watch number three as he gets outside and can't fight through. It's almost like a pick play that opens up for Tucker to get outside for the first down. Dustin three or four times now. Cooper Lutz has come on in relief out of the backfield. This is a throw across the middle and a dangerous one, escaping the hands of Taj Harris. Had that hung up a little bit longer, it may have been going the other way. Good coverage there by Trey Avery, the corner. Working in the slot, number 21. But when you get down after Illinois and Virginia got the day started here on ACC Network, it's the second game of a quadruple header here today. Syracuse and Rutgers playing for the first time since 2012. Mike Cousins, Dustin Fox, Dana Boyle on the sidelines, and Dustin, despite there being no points scored, that doesn't mean there hasn't been action. There has been a lot of fireworks. There's been some botches. Let's go back to the last Rutgers drive. You missed it. This is melting on the outside as a stutter and go and just drops the touchdown. But then they come right back and they get a touchdown, but guess what? It's getting called back. And then a sack and an opportunity here to get some points and just a, a weird snap to the holder and Syracuse takes over on downs and that's where we're at right now. 0-0 here at the Dome. Tommy DeVito making the start today. Not surprising to see him as the first one off the sideline. Dino Babers told us yesterday in a very coy way there's a very good chance we'll see the backup quarterback Garrett Schrader today. He played at the very end of last week's victory, 29 to 9 against Ohio. So third down and eight here, Dustin. We did not see a lot of tight end usage in the offense last week. Notably, Chris Elmore, the best we can tell you as what has been told to us by the university is that he is unavailable. He is not suspended, unavailable. No timeline for his return. So you've got Taj Harris, Sean Tucker, a lot of options here. And now they've got the timeout. Who are you going to look for here if you're if you're Sterling Gilbert in the Syracuse offense? Number three, Tosh Harris. They'll put him in the slot. He'll probably probably be matched up with their the corner Trey Avery, number 21, who plays that nickel corner position. And Tucker's back in the game now after the timeout. DeVito last week only threw for 92 yards. That was because. Tucker ran for 181, the most by an SU running back since 2012. So, Mike, they're going to go trips to the top of the screen. Keep an eye on the backside with Luke Benson, the tight end. Here comes Taj in motion. And a third down and eight. They set up the screen. It goes to Harris. He slips one, and he's inside the 10 and down near the five yard line. Taj Harris breaks a couple tackles. But not enough for SU. It's a tunnel screen here on the outside. You want to set it up, get it in behind the blockers, and then what a, what a move to make the defender miss to get inside the 10-yard line. And I, was there a fumble at the end of the play, Mike? 
Well, Rutgers is celebrating something. Taj Harris is lamenting that same thing. Well, Dustin, at first look there, it looks like the knees were down. Yeah, I'm a little confused. I, I thought for sure his knee was down. We'll take a look. So on an official review, 755 in the first. Ron Snodgrass will have a look, and we hope to have an answer of two powerful men standing on respective sidelines. 755 in the first. Ruling on the field was a tumble by Syracuse or a fumble by Syracuse wide receiver Taj Harris as he took a tumble to the After ground. Review, the ruling on the field stands. And the ruling on the field stands of a fumble. So as he went down, Dustin, it appeared as though his knee hit the ground first, but the referee needs undisputable, right. indisputable video evidence to overturn that call. And with the number of arms and legs in there, you, couldn't you see can't it. tell. You just couldn't see the football. So you're right, there, there is no indisputable video evidence to overturn it. And uh, what a break and a stop here for the Scarlet Knights. Bit of Bit of a bizarre first quarter, Mike. It's been a strange and winding road. Choppy, very choppy this game so far. Here almost to the midway point of the opening quarter with Syracuse and Rutgers. Vedral standing back on the goal line. And he gives it up for Pacheco. Gets a nice push behind an experienced offensive line. Nick Crimmen, sixth year at center there for the Scarlet Knights. They dispersed their carries pretty well last week. Pacheco had 14, Aaron Young had eight, Kyle Monagai had eight. They scored in so many different ways that the burden was not on one player. And the offense really didn't do a whole lot for a game that was 61 to 14. It was the defense and special teams. And with that game, it was the second highest scoring game or scoring team in week one. Buffalo scored 69 points to lead all FBS teams last week. But it was somewhat deceiving that if you watch through the full game, third quarter, that was still a game. It was a 26-14 game, right, in the middle of the third quarter. Then things just sort of spiraled out of control. Interception for a touchdown, punt block, touchdown, and, and of course, the game was pretty much over at that point. Rutgers first and 10. This is the speedy Crookshank around the edge. The orange on top of it. Five-yard pickup for the junior from Brooklyn, former Wisconsin Badger. Second and five, Vedral, the senior from Nebraska. He lets it fly. A quick turnaround for Bo Melton to about the 28-yard line and a first down. A lot of cushion here on the outside. And this is just a nice little hitch. Right to the sticks, make a man miss, get the first down. Vedral tosses Pacheco. Moderate gain on the run to the edge. And Dustin, you go back to that pass to Melton there. That cushion is showing respect for the speed the Rutgers offense has. They've got a lot of speed. I mean, between Crookshank, Jones, Melton, they've got a ton. And Coach Dino Babers talked about that with us this week. He said, this is Big Ten. I mean, they, they, they've got some dudes out there on the outside. Much different than a week ago when you played the Mid-American Mid Conference team, the Ohio Bobcats. Nothing against the Bobcats, but they don't have athletes like, like uh, Rutgers does. Pedro hands it off. Not a lot of room to operate for Isaiah Pacheco. The Orange defense can get set for a passing down on third and long. rise keys begin to jangle the Loud House can live up to its name a little bit with fans in the building for the first time for a football game since November of 2019 
A lot of cushion here from the corners of Syracuse. Vedral has already been sacked once. He throws off his back foot. That's to Monagai, the running back. The Orange defenders converge quickly, and they force a fourth down. They're going to get it back. Great tackle on the outside in open field by Garrett Williams. This is not an easy tackle to make. Terrific job by the redshirt freshman corner. Adam Korsak, the senior from Melbourne, Australia, to kick to Trevor Pena. Korsak, a tremendous punter. His contributions not to be overlooked. Averaged 50 yards a kick last week, and he's on track to become the leading punter in Rutgers history. Pena turns it upfield from inside the 20, catches a block, and there are flags from all directions at the end of that play. It was only a six-yard return, but Dustin, it appears there may be 15 tacked on. This is going to be a late hit out of bounds. As he was being tackled and taken out of bounds, the, he finished the WWE move <laughs> out of bounds. And I think that's what all the flags are going to be about. The hip toss, Mike. Got some folk style wrestling there for you. <laughs> you say Nick Suriano, and the Rutgers fans will know who you're talking about. All right, let's get this penalty call, huh? That's two now for you. During the return, personal foul, blindside block, receiving team number 24, half the distance to the goal, after the play, and sportsmanlike conduct, kicking team number 29, 15-yard hit. 0-0 zero, zero from 900 point tosses are where you usually see team captains, star players. Today, a little bit different. A.J. Calabro there. 20 years after September 11, 2001, A.J. Calabro's life, Dana, changed irreversibly that day. Mike, you talk about A.J. Calabro, what he's been through. Lost his dad just one month prior to his second birthday. His dad is a true patriot, a true hero. He was honored during the coin toss ahead of today's game. And if you see him on the field, he's wearing a red and black band. It's honoring the city's firemen, a constant reminder of his dad, Sal, and grandfather, Francis, who sacrificed so much. A surname he is so proud to carry with him. Thanks, Dana. Syracuse back on offense after receiving the Rutgers punt. And a run of five on first down. Dustin, I think there's a lot of ways to look at today. You have 37 Rutgers alums who died on September 11th, 30 from Syracuse University. There's so much bad that happened that day, but I think also it's emblematic of how good we can all be to each other as Americans. No question. And these uniforms they're wearing today for Rutgers are, are awesome. I, I think that they are really do pay homage to the 37 lives lost, the Rutgers alum lost at 9-11. Uh, at Third down at six. DeVito had eyes only for one man, and he unloads the first down throw. Courtney Jackson has his first catch of the day. They get a dozen. DeVito is going to deliver a strike right here. How about this? Quick one, two, right to the sticks. And Goes another right fast pass. Right back to, to Courtney Jackson. Two catches in a row. This is the first time the Orange has tried to up the tempo today. They've been slowed by some penalties, drives that have stagnated overall. Picked up six on the quick throw, and DeVito has to check to the sideline. And again, if you're picking up five, six, seven yards on first down, that allows you to pick up that tempo and try to keep the defense on their heels. From the slot, it's Taj Harris. And it takes almost a quintet of Scarlet Knights to stop him inside the Rutgers 40. 13 more yards for Syracuse. Wow, what a throw, what a catch. And you're right, it takes about 10 Rutgers defenders to get Taj on the ground. Four, 
five, six, seven. Better than half the allotment out there in white this afternoon. Back to Tucker, change of pace. He proves elusive. First down, flag is dropped at the 34-yard line. He had 13 yards, but. Holding. Offense, number 87. 10 yard penalty, first down. It's the tight end, Luke Benson, who skywalks the offense 10 yards. You see 87 here, right there on number three. That's Padukase. He's a tough guy to block, but that was going to be an easy call for the official as it opened up the hole for Tucker. But Tucker's got a burst, though. I, I like this young running back for Syracuse. He doesn't go down on the first hit. No, he, he avoids the first hit. He's got great burst and speed, excellent vision. It's amazing. He was a diamond in the rough, man. He was the four-string running back last year. He was at the intersection of preparation and opportunity. Atu Kasi, rather Tyreek Maddox-Williams, stops Cooper Lutz after the penalty. Second down, 14 for the Orange. Inside of a minute to play in the opening quarter, both teams have had ample opportunity to put something on the scoreboard, and yet still 0-0. Both teams have, have had the football inside the red zone, yet no points. A little bit of sloppy play here early in this football season. Last time they put Benson in front, it was a runoff to the right side. Again, a handoff. The Rutgers front line, strong push back. Throughout the course of this week, Dustin, I don't know about you, but you go back and forth because you love to go into a game having some idea. We're supposed to be the experts, right? <laughs> of knowing how a game is going to play out. No idea. And you could convince yourself one side or the other this week that either team was going to come away a winner. Whichever matchup you looked at, you're like, okay, well, maybe Rutgers has some better receivers, but Corliss first quarter inside the Carrier Dome. My cousins, Dustin Fox, Dana Boyle, glad to have you with us. These two teams. Going head to head for the first time since 2012. It's a third down and 15 for Syracuse here near midfield coming out of the quarter break. For the second straight third down, it's a screen. A little bit conservative there. The running back, Abdul Adams, gets them to the 38 yard line and basically back to the original line of scrimmage. And Syracuse is going to be forced to punt this football away. Test here for James Williams, the freshman from Georgia. With Crookshank back inside the 10 to receive for Rutgers. Rutgers blocked the first one. This gets off cleanly. As it sails out and is marked at about the 12 yard line. Up next here on ACC Network, number six, Clemson. Two game losing streak for the first time in almost 10 years. They look to snap that in Death Valley against South Carolina State. And then our last game of the night, ACC Network primetime presented by Geico, Jacksonville State, and Florida State, 8 Eastern. Dustin, what have your impressions been from Rutgers' offense? I would say at times they look good, at times they look sloppy. It's a big step up in competition. You mentioned that in the open, Mike, and I, I think they're realizing that this Syracuse defense is a lot better than Temple's was a week ago. Edrill keeps it. Last week, nine carries, a career high 71 yards for the 22 year old whose birthday is coming up in about a month. I'll tell you, I, I would like to see Rutgers challenge these corners a little bit more. We've got a freshman out there on the right side in uh, Deuce Chestnut, who had a really good game last week. Vedrill, there, there's yeah, a challenge. He loads up. The throw is a little bit off target there down the sideline for Bo Melton, guarded by Garrett Williams. Flag as well. Offside. Defense, number 45. Five-yard penalty, 
results in a first down. This game has been like driving in the northern part of the United States, you know, Ohio, Pennsylvania, yeah. central New York, after the snow has thawed and the salt has made all the potholes in the road. It's been so bumpy. It's there's been choppy. No, there's there been, has been no smooth road so far. There's been no rhythm for either team. Mandrill's pass to Melton is caught. The orange defense converges quickly on him at the 26-yard line. I'd say Cody Roscoe nearly had himself a pick six on this play. Number 18 was coming off the edge, and it just kind of squeezes right by his hands. Second and six against the three-man front that shows a potential blitz on a lot of downs. Edrill swings it, a couple of blockers in front. Nicely drawn up play there, Isaiah Washington, who got targeted just once last week, tackled by Jihad Carter. Third down, and you can hardly call it a yard for Greg Schiano's offense. I might just quarterback sneak this if I can get up to the line of scrimmage, Mike. Bedrill at quarterback, 200 pounds. His center, 315. Well, they might give it to Crookshank coming across the formation. They dress it all up to hand it off to Pacheco. And that's close, but the initial spot shows that he's moved the chains for a first down. Yeah, that, that's all Pacheco in that run because that thing was stuffed up from the get-go. But he kept grinding and churning those legs to pick up that first down. They're snapping it with more than 20 seconds left on the play clock. Pacheco is right to the first down marker. He's got 10 there. This offense that has yet to score, but last year averaged 27 points a game. It's a nice read option by Rutgers. Elton makes another grab. A couple defenders fly right by him. I like kind of what they're doing now, but getting a little bit of a flow, Mike. Screen off to the left, make the defense run all the way <laughs> across the field, come back with the read option, and now a screen to the right, keeping this defense off balance. They need six for the first down. It's been short routes. The throws are right to the sticks. Crookshank, who just celebrated his birthday on Tuesday. The receiver, third down and short coming up for Rutgers. What will they do here? Oh, they're going to bring in Johnny Football. Johnny Langan at quarterback. They don't use him often, but when they do, look out for him to truck somebody on defense. He is a big dude, number 21. I think I've seen a quarterback wear 21 since Heath Schuler. He's 6'3", 235 pounds. Ran for a couple scores last week, and he takes it here. And he's marked short. It's fourth and half a yard on the carry by Langan. I just run the same play again. Yep. I would go for this on fourth and short and run the exact same play again. And the only problem with that play is when you fake the handoff, it's, it's clearly a designed quarterback run. You fake the handoff, you allow the defense to converge. If he just takes that football and goes straight wildcat, Mike, I think he gets the first down. If, I, if I'm Johnny Lang, I just take this ball off the snap, don't even fake the handoff, just run it straight up the gut. Fall forward for a first down. Rutgers waiting it out. And now a timeout. No, rather than burn the timeout, Rutgers took the delay a game. Yeah, but they were going to go for it, Mike. They were going to go for it. Now they're going to punt the football. I would have used the timeout. It's a measure of confidence in your offensive line and in Johnny Langan as well, rather than to just yeah. get right up there and, like you said, run the exact same play. And just, yeah, keep putting pressure on the defense. 
So now in, instead of keeping your offense on the field, now you got to come out and punt the football and try to pin them deep. It's a little confusing there, Mike. I, I, I personally would have called the timeout and let Langan run it again. It's Corsak, the Australian from the 32. And Pena back at the eight. A sidewinder falls into Pena's hands. A dozen yards from the goal line. Will Syracuse be the first to score in this game? We'll see on the other side here in the Carrier Dome. Oh, the field hockey matchup between number 24, James Madison, number 14, Wake Forest at noon Eastern. And then women's soccer, USF and Miami, both games right here on ACC Network and ESPN app. Madison from UNC, what a terrific player she is. My goodness. Guess who's in the game? It's Garrett Trader at quarterback taking his first meaningful snaps. In the orange and blue, the transfer sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina, came in from Mississippi State. He went down to Starkville to play for Joe Moorhead. Then Mike Leach took over, wanted to turn him into a wide receiver. That was not what he felt in his best interest. And so he finds himself here at a quarterback and replacing Tommy DeVito to start this drive. Dustin, different expectations offensively with Schrader taking snaps. Well, he's, he's got some wiggle to him. He, he can run the football. That adds an extra dynamic element to this offense. But he can throw it, too. He had a, had a nice little run there. What was it, back in 1920? At Mississippi State. I hope not 1920. I think he'd be ineligible for college football. In 19 Perhaps. and 20, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he throws the swing pass. It's Taj Harris. Flag at the line of scrimmage. I just wanted to make sure you hadn't been watching film that was in black and white leading from no, this game. I, I left that at home. Illegal formation. Offense, number 60, lined up in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. They're down. Be on Bergeron. Their left tackle. Got to make sure that helmet's on the line of scrimmage. This is not a first half. They're going to be hanging in the Everson here in Syracuse <laughs> with the way both teams have played. Almost midway through the second quarter now. Drives that have stalled out, penalties, incompletions, some good stands along their respective defensive lines. Schrader at quarterback, much more of a threat to run. And he wants to, but Rutgers has different plans. Tracked down quickly as he tried to take off. Mohamed Ture, the sophomore defensive end, brings him down from behind. I feel like he tried to take off way too fast on this. And a good job by the Rutgers defense again getting a hold on third down. <clears throat> We talked about the Rutgers defense right from the get-go today. It helped them with their 61-point output last week against Temple. Here, they have James Williams hunting from the end zone. There's a flag down as he kicks it away to Crookshank, drifting back to the 41-yard line and quickly to midfield. And he stopped there. Nine-yard return. But we'll have to check the flag. Thought for a minute Crookshank was going to. Illegal formation. Kicking team number eight. That five yard penalty will be added to the succeeding spot. First down. Timeout. Feeling a little bit like last week with field position dollar renovation. That scoreboard you see, the lights that much better illuminate this venue that opened all the way back September 20th, 1980, with an orange game against Miami, Ohio. No fans have been in this building for a football game since November of 2019. Many today in central New York 
Happy to be back at the Carrier Dome. There was a penalty on that play. Initially, it was ruled five yards would be added to the end of the run. Instead, Syracuse re-kicks. So that favors the Orange as it rolls all the way down to the 36-yard line. For more on the renovations, let's go down to Dana, who's standing by with Pete Sala, Syracuse's chief facilities officer. Thanks so much, Mike. Some refer to Pete as the godfather of the Dome. Talk us through what's been your biggest motivator to renovate the Dome this last season. Well, it started out as a roof replacement, and then we said, we need to really take care of our fans who have been here and supported us for all these years. So we got into the video, we got into the air conditioning, we got into the lighting, we got into the sound. It just turned out to be a great project. I would say so. I did a game here, Mike, a couple years ago, and uh, let's just say it was a little warm in here. You can finally put to rest the old tired joke that there is no yeah. air conditioning in, in the, the carrier, carrier dome. <laughs> Vedral under pressure. He's ripped down at the 25 yard line. The Orange defenders relentless. A loss of 10. McKinley Williams, number zero here, is going to twist around and he's going to get home. There is nowhere for Vedral to go as that's a big sack on first down by McKinley Williams. So Williams traveled but didn't play last week. A welcome return to the defensive line. Pedro back to pass second and 20 facing pressure again and he's brought down. Stefan Thompson. The linebacker does it this time. And, and wasting no time after the sack. Third in Rochester. They're inching closer to third in Buffalo. I was going to say Fredonia. Just list off some more SUNY schools, Dustin. <laughs> 6 2 to go before the half. This building is as loud as it has been today for a third and 30. The defense showing like they'll drop eight. Third and Brockport. Vedral had to get rid of it quickly. Bo Melton makes the catch. He shakes his way past Garrett Williams. Stephon Thompson, one of many there to help force a punt. What a difference, Mike, the crowd makes for a defense in a situation like that. The Loud House is rocking, and you could see it from Vedral. He had some confusion on the offense. They, they were just misaligned. And then, of course, the, the two sacks that backed them up, and then the penalty. Rutgers was going in the wrong direction, and now, Syracuse has an excellent opportunity to get this football cross midfield here with the, with the hopes of getting some points before halftime. Corsak with a weight. Pena lost the ball. And at the bottom of that pile, it looks like the orange return man came up with it. Not a returnable ball by Rutgers, but Pena can exhale. Well, if you came for the defense, drive of the day for Syracuse quarterback Garrett Schrader. As the Orange takes over, 4.55 to go before halftime. So, Dustin, we were talking in the timeout, and you said you would go with DeVito here. They elect Schrader. I, I, I would just go back with the quarterback that I trust knows the system. With five minutes to go in the, in the first half, an opportunity to go the length of the field. I, I didn't think DeVito was playing that poor. Uh, I would give him another shot here at some point. But I was a little surprised they did, did not go back to DeVito for this drive. DeVito started 7 of 8 for 65 yards. Schrader has the ability to take off and run with it. It'll be a third and long as the defensive line collapses on top of him. And the ball may have come out, but I think he was down. That's certainly the claim the Scarlet Knights have made, but it stays with SU. Their best drive today was their second. Ten plays, 52 yards, almost four minutes, and right. it ended with a fumble at the five-yard line. 
And who led that drive? Tommy DeVito. That's right. Taj Harris on a slant so you, pattern. So you, you would go back with Schrader here? I think it would be a short leash to okay. not give him another drive. I'd give him another drive in the game. I just think because it's almost halftime. Schrader gets rid of it. Beautiful tackle on Courtney Jackson there to stop him from getting any further upfield by Christian Izzy in the safety. Fourth down and another punt coming. Tosh Harris comes off to the sideline, very frustrated with that drive. After he had a nice couple catches early in the first quarter, has not been targeted since. The clock continues to dwindle away. Rutgers won the toss. They kicked to start. So they're going to get the ball back to start the third quarter as well. Well, if you like defense, and if you like punting, defense and punts, we've got it all for you here. You know it, JC. My cousins, Dustin Fox, Dana Boyle, and Syracuse and Rutgers meeting up for the first time since 2012 have, for the most part, traded punts and penalties today. Brookshank here eclipses midfield, and he is upended at the 47-yard line. That's a second great tackle on special teams by Garrett Williams, their starting corner. Getting down there and making the stop. Extra yard for teachers, an annual effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to support and honor great teachers across the country at games and on social media. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard. Excellent starting field position. Pacheco sneaks into the backfield. Vedral releases, finds Melton on the screen. And like a bowling ball, he takes some defenders with him like pins to get nine <laughs> yards. It's a good block from Pacheco, the running back, who bursts outside and, and really takes out a cornerback and opens up that lane for the nine-yard pickup. Former UCF and Nebraska quarterback taking a deep shot in the single coverage, and his pass is incomplete. Like, I don't think that Bo Melton was even ready for this football to be, be coming his way. At the last second, Federal takes a shot, and the one thing about this Syracuse defense, Mike, is they do a great job disguising. This is a 3-3-5. They play a lot of quarters, a lot of man coverage. And when these safeties line up across the board, it's with the, with the corners at the same depth, it's hard to tell exactly what the coverage is pre-snap. I think it's really confusing Rutgers right now. The defenders creep toward the line of scrimmage pre-snap. Nothing doing on the run try. Josh Black emerges out of that pile quite happily. I, I would bring in Johnny Langan here and just go for this. It's about a yard and a half. Here, here he comes. Here comes 21. Yep, they didn't do it on their last fourth down, which was a little bit closer toward midfield. This makes it easier to swallow if you have a turnover on downs deeper into your opponent's territory. And, and I would just straight quarterback draw this. Don't even take the time to fake the handoff to Pacheco. It's a Rutgers timeout. <laughs> Minute 31 to go before the half. Rutgers is going to get the ball to start the third quarter as well. Perhaps some indecision on their part, deciding what to do here on fourth and one, although to many it may seem straightforward. Yeah, straight forward, run 21 straight Literally, forward. run him straight forward. 
And Dustin, let's take a look at our marathon drive recap. Not too exciting if you're a Scarlet Knight fan. Let's see if they can get some points on this particular drive as Vedral comes back into the game. You gotta think this is Pacheco time. He is stopped, blown up in the backfield. The Orange, as if they knew the play call. A turnover on downs. Syracuse gets it back with a minute 27 to go before the half. Akel Jones must have known exactly what they were running because he is unblocked. Absolutely unblocked by the offensive line. And Cedrice Palin, the, the left guard, was pulling and just opened up that hole for Jones to get through. Like, you, you ever played Tech Mobile when you were a kid? And you pick the same play as your, who you're playing against. It was like he was in the backfield that fast. It was amazing. That's the the leader of this defense. Jones is uh, coaches we, ch we chatted with him this week. Of course, the defensive coordinator Tony White says that's a dude you don't mess with. Three straight drives for Schrader as he unleashes a deep ball and it's knocked away. Taj Harris streaking down the field had eyes on the end zone. Instead, it's second and ten. You were talking Tech Mobile. That was a pass <laughs> out of NFL Blitz. <laughs> yeah, I like that reference too. That was a good ball though by Schrader. Unfortunate part, there was three defenders around. But I thought for a moment it was going to sneak through the defenders, and, and, and Taj Harris was about to be banging his head off the goalpost. We've seen now on here what may be each team's last drive of the first half, really the first time that they have opened things up and tried to take a big shot downfield. I think you have to. Both teams have struggled offensively to, to really gain any sort of yardage. That's a good throw. There's time for Schrader and a dart to the edge. That's, that's a first down. That's an NFL type throw right there. Big time throw by Schrader. To Sherrod Johnson on the outside. It's a long throw. Look at him go through his reads. Looks off to the right, comes back far to the left. They give him some good time again. Tucker is the check down underneath. Right to the first down marker. A minute 10 to go. They've got just one timeout left. Well, they may have found something here, Mike, with this no, no huddle, up tempo offense to end the first half with Schrader at quarterback. He's got it going over the middle. And just a little bit too tall for Courtney Jackson. If he caught it, it was six. Just got to have a little bit more touch on this pass because Courtney Jackson was wide open down the seam. Look at this. Just tries to get some touch on it. Just a little bit too much mustard. And overthrows Jackson. He put something on it. Like a javelin thrown by Zeus sometimes, a little bit too strong. Right, come back to Taj Harris here, top of your screen, middle. Second and ten, Schrader forced out of the pocket. He throws across the middle, on the roll, and the pass is complete. Taj Harris, an ill-advised throw, but it works this time. Ill-advised Ill is right. He's scrambling, getting chased down from behind. And I don't know how he comes back to Harris, finds him wide open down the, the hash marks. Dangerous throw, Mike, but it works out. They got 18 yards, and here they get none. Tucker is pushed back at the line of scrimmage. Last time out of the half for the Orange with 35 seconds to go. This has been an impressive drive by Schrader. I uh, thought he made a couple nice throws. He's taking what the defense is giving him. Matriculating the football down the field. They've got an opportunity here now, Mike, to get points. But they did use their last time out. So you remember, uh, you can't take a sack. Got to be cognizant of where you are on the field and the clock. If they don't end this drive with six points, they have one of the best kickers this school has ever seen, Andre Schmidt. He's one away from tying the school record for made field goals. The advantage had gone to DeVito over the first game and a quarter. 
if you buy into the mantra of time in the market beats timing the market, <laughs> he had more experience in the program. Schrader has come on a couple of eh, drives. This one has been the best of the game for any of the quarterbacks who have taken a snap today. I think he's maybe a little bit more comfortable, Mike, in this no huddle type of up tempo offense, which they're, they're running on this final drive of the first half. It seems a little bit more comfortable in it. He's got four receivers and Tucker with him in the backfield. Rutgers brings pressure. Can't take a sack. And Schrader loses the ball as he goes to the ground. It bounces out of bounds. He's trying to toss that, Mike. It wasn't a fumble. He tries to throw it forward. There's no receiver in the area. See, watch at the end of this play. I think he may have missed a face mask right there. He just throws this like a chess pass in basketball. To who? Nobody, but he was outside the pocket. So the good news is once it goes for them, for, for Syracuse, if it goes past the line of scrimmage, it's just an incomplete pass. Now, had he been in the pocket and did that, there would have been a flag. And he's lucky. That's, that saves them, Mike, probably, goodness, another 10, 12 seconds. Assuredly, Greg Schiano, the Rutgers head coach, had a lot of questions for the officiating crew about that play. Under further review. So perhaps that review was prompted by the inquiry from Greg Schiano. 23 seconds now on the clock, and they'll have to take a look as Schrader bobbled that ball as well but as he, he made his escape. But I think he got possession back of the football. Let's see if there's a face mask here too first. It's close. So he drops the ball now. Now he's got possession here. Possession. And then throw it. Was his knee down? That's, though? A, that's a good question. And Mike. it very well may have been. That may that may be what they're looking at, Mike. Good point. When he shuffles this ball, boom, yeah, knee he's down. down. Ball in possession. So, so they're going to have to determine time on the clock. Yep. Down in distance, and then the clock has to keep moving. On on the official, on the wind. Yep, he firmly possesses that ball there, so he's down. And you expect that as this goes upstairs to the replay booth with Rick Nelson and Mike Conlon up there today as part of the crew, that this will get changed. So his knee's going to be down to 25, Mike. Let's talk a little strategy here, because if you're Syracuse, you have to be very careful. You have no more timeouts left, just 23 seconds on the clock. you got a down here to work with. You got to work the sidelines, Mike, and you got to work something to the end zone. You got two options. And option three is you can't take a sack. Out of timeouts. If I'm Rutgers, I'm bringing the house right now. I would bring pressure on Schrader and make him make a play. And if you can get a sack, you would have to make them hurry up their field goal unit onto the field. And I, don't, frankly, I don't know how much time you have. 23 seconds is not a lot. A couple of deep ball tries on this drive. One to Taj Harris, another thrown too long for Courtney Jackson. And we will get the definitive answer on After all things. Review, the quarterback's knee was down at the 25 yard line with 30 seconds on the clock. By rule, this includes a 10 second clock subtraction. Reset the game clock to 30 seconds. Subtract 10 seconds to 20 seconds, and it's third down. No that was, a, that was the runoff. Rube Goldberg machine of time yeah. explanations. Go to 30, subtract 10. We could have just said 20. Nevertheless, I was never that good at math in school. <laughs> you don't have to be good at math I, to I know never. that it's a crowd that's divided here today. <laughs> Folks who have made the trip to see Rutgers. And Syracuse fans are plenty as well. So third down 15. The clock will wind as Schrader takes the snap. Throw it to the end zone. With his feet set, he does make the heave toward the end zone. And it's just too long again for Anthony Queeley. And they'll try the field goal here at the end of the half. 
There was some pressure from Rutgers. If he puts that football on the money to, to Quilly on the outside, that's a touchdown. Andre Schmidt has made 58 field goals in his SU career. This from 43 would tie him with Cole Murphy for the most in the school's history. And another timeout here for Shiano and Rutgers with 13 seconds to go. So a made field goal puts the Orange up 3-0 going into the half. If indeed Schmidt does connect, otherwise it's more likely than not to be 0-0 at the half. And this game has been mightily interesting despite the lack of scoring. Uh, there, there have been some sloppy play, but, but there has been some good plays made as well, Mike. But neither team can find a way to capitalize on a drive. That's been the problem. They're getting the football. They're moving it inside the 30, in the 20, inside the 20 a couple of times in the red zone. And, and neither team has been able to finish. Fumbles. Penalties and, and really a lot of good defense, frankly. I, th I think both teams' defenses have, have bowed up and played really well. Out of the timeout, Schmidt from 43 for Syracuse. And the kick is no good. If there's anybody who Dino Babers would expect to be reliable today in a day where you haven't been able to count on just about anything, it would have been Schmidt. Just pushes it. Just pushes it right to the to the left. And that is one of the most reliable kickers you will find in the entire country. In is the last a, is it a full moon or something today? <laughs> it's just weird. In the last few years in which the Orange has struggled following their 10 win season in 2018, special teams has produced some of the best players to come yeah. out of this program. So cool. Rutgers lines up with Vedro with nine seconds to go in the half. They've got one timeout. Yep. Never mind. And they use it. Making friends a plenty here inside the Carrier Dome. Well, both teams trying to start 2 0 oh this year. Rutgers last year, 3 and 6 in a Big Ten only schedule. They beat Michigan State, Purdue, Maryland. Three road victories in that one year matched their road win total from the last six years amazing. in conference play. Yeah, it took Shiano about five years his first go round here. This time, I think it's going to take about two and a half. We'll put you on the record for that. Check back in a couple years. They've done a good, they, no, they've done a good job with their roster. He's got two recruiting classes in. He's got some guys from the portal, transfer portal, and uh, some interesting uh, booze from the crowd. They saw a lot of football, but not a lot of points. In fact, they saw no points in this first half the game at quarterback for the Orange. Last week, 99% of the snaps they're about went to Tommy DeVito in the season opening 29-9 win over the Ohio Bobcats in Athens, Ohio. Back inside the Dome, 1-0 and oh to start the year for both teams. And Dana, what did Coach Ciano have to say? Thanks, Mike. I spoke with Shiano coming out of half, and he said, we just need to play cleaner. First half was a little bit sloppy. Defensively, Syracuse is a good team, so we can just play our game. It's still 0-0. Good things will come. Certainly reason for optimism after they scored 61 points in the season opener against Temple last week. The most points against an FBS team for the Scarlet Knights since 2008 when they dropped 63 on Louisville. So Vedral in the first half, 10 of 12 for 58 yards, but neither team with anything spectacular to speak of offensively. Here comes the rush. It's Vedral on the run. And his throw toward the sideline takes some good tiptoeing there by Giovanni Haskins, who's got the catch. 
Well, Mike, I mean, you, you think for the first half, this Rutgers team could do nothing on the ground. The most success they had is when they took a couple shots outside to, to Crookshank and to, to Melton. I'd like to see them try and stretch this defense out just a little bit. You've got so many guys inside the box here in this 3-3-5. It's confusing Rutgers offense. Syracuse shows blitz, collapses down on the run. I want to circle back, Dustin, to something you mentioned earlier in the game and that Greg Schiano hit on multiple times this week. He said it was confusing sometimes how the Orange gets into their defensive looks. What did he mean by that? Well, they're a base 3-3-5, but you have linebackers that will come up to the line of scrimmage and stand up as rush ends. And they get single coverage downfield. There's a lot of contact there between Garrett Williams and Bo Melton. No flags on the field, and it's fourth down. Coach Baber's really happy with that coverage by Garrett Williams on the outside. This was just terrific man-to-man -man coverage. Dino Baber was running down the sidelines to dap up Garrett Williams after that coverage. Cornerback play was impressive in week one for Syracuse. So far, grading out pretty well through one half against Rutgers. Corsack for Pena. He lets it go over his head. And it takes a roll all the way down to the one yard line. Interesting decision. Syracuse on offense. Is back at quarterback for Syracuse and taking a shot to Taj Harris, who drops it going down the sideline. Mike, this is just an absolutely beautiful throw by DeVito on the run. He's got Taj Harris on the outside, man coverage, and that's just a drop. That would have been a big play for this offense, and they need some sort of big plays, especially being backed up here in their own end zone. Criticism last week went to DeVito for a couple of missed throws to Harris that could have been touchdowns. That falls on the wide receiver's shoulders, and on a slant, it's a drop ball by Sherrod Johnson. DeVito has been hung out to dry on back-to-back -back throws. That's two really good throws. That was just, just a quick slant. Johnson can't come up with it. So now you wonder, do you try and just get some yardage here on the ground to give your punter some room? Or do you take another shot? Well, there might be some nervous flashbacks of a Rutgers blocked punt in the first quarter. Right. So the Orange has to hope they can pick up a good chunk here. Throw to the outside. Good tackle. So they'll get a couple yards there. It's Johnson again who gets back-to-back -back targets, but the punt will once again Come from their own end zone, a very dangerous returner who has not yet broken out in this game, Aaron Crookshank. And Rutgers, more likely than not, is going to start with tremendous field position. Like, don't you get the sense that something's going to happen big for either one of these teams that's going to open this game up? Because it just feels like we're playing in the trenches the entire game. Somebody's going to have to make a big play, whether it's a special team's return, like you mentioned right here, or... Taj Harris long touchdown something a big play chunk play is going to have to happen at some point plenty of hang time on the punt it's dropped by Crookshank and he gets tracked down thrown back to the 30 yard line masterful special teams coverage still see D Fox will put you on the spot. Okay. Current ACC and Big Ten teams. That's important. Current. I, I, there's I, need only, some, I need some time, Mike. There's only one series with 10 or more meetings in which one team has won every game. Who are the teams? You asked me this last night at our production meeting, and I guessed Pitt and Penn State. And that was wrong. So we already told you you were wrong. I was wrong. I yeah. said Pitt Penn State. That's wrong. That's right. Good try though, right? Do you want a hint? I, I would love a hint. You're watching one of the teams. Oh. That's it. That's as far as okay. I'm willing to go. <laughs> I will step over the line. I'm not a habitual line stepper. I'm just a line Don't, stepper yeah. today. Don't habitually cross that line, Mike. Good Chappelle reference. Rutgers back to it. 
Throw to the sideline. Oh, a dangerous pass from Vedral with Garrett Williams in hot pursuit of Bo Melton, who for the second straight week has been the top target for Vedral. Dustin, we're trying to make it easy for you. Come on, play along. <laughs> I'm just do, messing with you. Do you have These an are... idea, my friend? Oh, I didn't know until I read the answer. Oh, you know the answer. I do. Yeah, I get to read all the cards ahead of time. They got four yards on that throw. And now on a run from a young guy, a couple of extra powerful steps. He's right to the first down marker. Eclipses it by a yard. First down, Rutgers. Middle linebacker, Mikel Jones. Maybe, Manung guy maybe get a little run here here in the second half. They couldn't get anything going on the ground. Why not try the speedster freshman? As they dispersed their carries last week against Temple, he had eight, second most among the running back group behind Pacheco. Brookshank from the flat. And he can't get by Garrett Williams, who got him by the jersey with some elasticity for the tackle. <laughs> I thought the jersey was going to be ripped off. A good tackle by Williams. Williams comes off the field, shaking up just a little bit. It's the jersey grab. It looks for a second like, does he have his shoulder pads? No. He's going to rip that thing. Adrian Cole, the backup at corner, makes Syracuse younger there. Navigating the middle of that offensive line. Rutgers continues to pound away, looking for the first points of the day. Pedral, the senior from Wahoo, Nebraska, flanked by Pacheco, sends Young into the flat. He looks to the running back, and after patiently waiting, dumps it off to him as well, and he is stopped in his tracks. Deuce Chestnut, Mike, had, had the game of his life last week. He's a true freshman that got the start against the Bobcats. It's the first time ever Coach Dino Babers gave a game ball to a true freshman in his first game. He played so well last week, and that was an excellent tackle by him on the outside. He is, uh, he's going to be a really, really good corner here in the ACC. Bedrill keeping the short routes and throws just short of the first down marker, Isaiah Washington. And Dino Babers said this game would be one to help find out if Deuce Chestnut is consistently good right. or just occasionally great? Well, you don't want to be a one-hit wonder, right? You want to come out every single week, week and be consistent. The hallmark of excellence, Mike, is consistency and performance. Much rather be the Beatles than a one-hit wonder. Handoff. No, sir. Pacheco is stonewalled at the line. If I had a nickel for every time Rutgers is in a third and short to fourth <laughs> and short situation where you got to make a decision, and it's an easy one. Johnny Langan's going to come in at quarterback, the six foot three, 235 pounder, who is tough to bring down. And this place on fourth and one really starting to get cooking. When Langan's been in, it's been quarterback run. 6'3", 235, lowers his shoulders and bursts through for a Rutgers first down. See what they do here? They fake the handoff to the outside, just enough room. It's a good push, really good push. By Cedrice Palant, the left guard. Officials timeout which would indicate this is closer than they're going to they're going to bring the chains out to measure. I don't think he got a very good spot. The line to gain was the 29 yard line and this football sitting right on it. Well let the suspense build as major college sports most primitive technology helps us measure a first down. 
Love your sarcasm. They got it. First down, Rutgers. And Dustin, I'm nothing but serious 100% of the time. <laughs> My cousins, Dustin Fox, Dana Boyle, reporting on the sidelines today. Syracuse and Rutgers, back and forth they've gone. Turnovers, punts, more punts, a missed field goal, penalties. And more punts. And that's how we are at 9.16 to go, third quarter, with both teams having visions of 2 and 0. Oh. Only one will emerge victorious this afternoon. Bedrill flips it for Crookshank. He's got some help as he tries to turn the corner. The great speedster who spent the 18 and 19 seasons at Wisconsin so far, for the most part, has been kept in check. Great team. Cody Roscoe for a big dude on that defensive line. He was running sideline to sideline to track that thing, that thing down, and he did a really good job getting it for a short game. Second down, four to go with the Scarlet Knights in field goal range. Ball's out. Melton to the sideline. Loose ball. He comes up with it. The son of a former Rutgers wide receiver and running back, Gary, and his mom, Vicky, a Rutgers basketball player. Catches it. Turns, makes a football move, but gets it back. Lucky to get that football back. The way this game has gone, Mike, you, you assume some sort of turnover is about to happen. Nobody's been consistent inside the red zone. And it may well come down to whoever possesses the ball last today. Off to the left side, Manungai is ripped to the ground. Jeff Canton, Orku. Do these teams have each other's playbooks? It seems like on every big crucial moment, crucial down, the opposite team knows exactly what they're running. I mean, it's it's like playing Tech Mobile, Mike. I'm, I'm making a funny old 90s reference, but it, it does feel like that. Up A, Here down comes B. The 12th play of the drive. And Vedro wants to throw. He faces pressure as he's on the move and drops it off out of bounds. So the ball is at the 21 yard line. You're looking at about a 38 yard field goal try if they don't advance any further. Coming up here on third and 12. It's not a full house today, but it is a loud one. It, it feels full. And it sounds full. They call it the Loud House for a reason. See, look at Syracuse defenders right now. They're all standing up. They're not allowing Rutgers to know exactly what they're doing. Then they bring the pressure. And whistles halt play as Vedral dropped back into a collapsing pocket. Charge timeout. Rutgers, their first. This will be it. Shiano is fired up. He says, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to the other official. He seemed to indicate that that call was the leavings of a farm animal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I would imagine it was something along those lines. Are you a, are you a lip reader, Mike? Not anything that could be shared on family friendly television. Let's revisit our Affleck trivia question. That's family friendly. That's right. Yes. Fun for all ages. Trivia. And it was among current ACC and Big Ten teams. There's only one ACC Big Ten series with 10 or more meetings in which one team has won every game. Who are the teams? The hint was one of them is playing today in the Carrier Dome. Would you like to make one final guess? No. <laughs> and I appreciate your candor. So let's end the suspense. Miami, Miami and Rutgers. That's good. Shout out to the uh, is it, is it a student who had that? Sam, Sam Oppenheim. Oppenheim. Shout out, buddy. Good job. Good job, buddy. You stumped me. Johnny Langan 
on the field. Tight left of the formation with Vedral at quarterback. What could this be on third down and 13? Vedral back. He's got some time. He throws short. Shameen Jones, receiver. At the 15, his forward progress stops, but there's a flag at the point of the throw and some extracurricular action after the whistle. You're going to get a hold on Rutgers and an unsportsmanlike foul for the hip toss, I think, from the Syracuse side. which should offset and play it again. If I'm right. And that's always a dangerous endeavor to know whether you're right. I'm going on, <laughs> I'm going on a limb and think I got this there right. Two fouls on the play. Holding offense number 66. One for one. Personal foul. Defense number three. The foul's offset. Replay third down. And another flag was just thrown during that announcement by Ron Snodgrass from the Syracuse sideline. It's probably going to be on Coach Babers. That's all it could be. They weren't playing football. Syracuse head coach. That's a first down. First the game. Has the wow. Automatic first down. That is a huge call, Mike. Talk about the difference between maybe three points and six. That is an immensely Bad mistake by Dino Babers. Immensely. In a game that has been this close all day. Rutgers is walked closer toward the goal line. Like it was going to be third and 15, and now it's first and 10 at the what? 19 yard line? There were offsetting penalties. Instead, and his comes late. It was during the announcement of the penalties. So Rutgers, I think he was upset with the call on his guy and thought that should not have been called a personal foul. And he found himself with the personal foul. Rutgers takes advantage of a mistake by Dino Babers. So Vedral gets quickly to the line and sets his offensive line. From the Syracuse 11, the Rutgers offense, Manungai, and he is in. A Rutgers touchdown, one play after a penalty against Dino Babers. The scoreless tie has been broken, and it's 6-0 Scarlet Knights. Valentino Ambrosio for the extra point. The former soccer player at Fairleigh Dickinson in 2018 played soccer at Rutgers in 2019. And now doing the kicking for the Scarlet Knights, 7 0 Rutgers. Well, it's been all defense, all punts, and then Manungai gets a convoy to the end zone, 7 0. Scarlet Knights on top of Syracuse. Cuz, Fox. All right, Jordan. Well, don't expect a master class in verbal restraint from either of the head coaches coming anytime soon because there has just been Vesuvian levels of anger exploding from both head coaches within the last five minutes of gameplay. 
Yeah, tensions are flying high on both sidelines, but I don't know what Coach Giano's still upset about. He was gifted a touchdown there in that last drive. Kyle Manungai with an 11-yard touchdown run puts Rutgers on the board first. Trevor Pena on the return. Spin move gets him across the 20 and out to the 25-yard line. So which quarterback does the Orange trust most here? We've seen Tommy DeVito. We've seen Garrett Schrader back and forth. Pressure is going to be heavy on whoever it is. I'm guessing it's going to be Tommy DeVito in a situation like this. The quarterback you trust, who knows this offense. Schrader's going to play this year. He's got some ability, there's no doubt about that. But I think in a situation like this, Mike, I, I would go back with my veterans. And they are. And with Tucker in the backfield as well. Someone's got to make a play for Syracuse. And they've on, taken on the outside. They've I mean, taken a few deep shots. Taj Harris, notably a drop earlier in this half when he had some separation down the far sideline. An overthrow of Courtney Jackson heading down this same end of the field. So the opportunities, Dustin, have been there, they but have. they may have to take a few more. Taj Harris on that last drive had a drop that would have been probably a 35 40 yard gain and it's uncharacteristic of him because he is their top wide receiver and NFL prospect oh he's got him again here's DeVito going long for Harris who's got it and he's tripped up at the 25 yard line the biggest Syracuse play of the day a 50 yard hookup like I said, someone's going to have to make a play for the orange. In the biggest spot. He's going to catch Taj Harris right down the seam. And he just beats Trey Avery off the line of scrimmage and the safety's late getting over top. And that's a dime drop by Tommy DeVito. Well thrown football in stride. It's exactly what they needed. Change of pace. They go to Tucker. He's got a burst. He's into the end zone. From 24 yards, an extra point away from tying things up. And the tackle's broken, and then he's off. He sees the end zone, he says, I'm gonna get there. Shows off that speed, and just like that, we approach a tie ball game. The extra point for Schmidt. It's the equalizer. First it was Taj Harris, and then it was Sean Tucker running away from the Rutgers defense like they were calling about an extended car warranty. They left him in the dust for Ty. And two more games as part of our quadruple header later on today. Clemson assuredly will have more than two rushing yards this week as they take on South Carolina State. And our day closes off with our primetime matchup presented by Geico, Jacksonville State, and Florida State. Mike Cousins, Dustin Fox. That's a mistake. Dana Boyle. Inside the Carrier Dome, Crookshank, after a couple of bounces, does pick it up, and he's denied anything more than the 20-yard line. Crookshank should have just put his foot on the, the out-of-bounds line and touched the football. They'd have got a, a penalty on that. Not a lot of people. Lot of, not a lot of people know that rule, Mike. That's a little special teams hack. Yeah, right it, is, there. it is a hack, life hack. You are out as, of play as a teamer, and then the ball is out of play. Yeah, that's right. We were taught that day one in the National Football League. I was with the Buffalo Bills. Well, let's see who can circle the wagons here between Rutgers and Syracuse. Manungai after the touchdown run of 11 yards to strike first for Rutgers lowers his shoulder. And knifes his way forward for a gain of almost five yards on that first down carry. Look, I think they found something here with Manungai in the backfield. He's running hard. He's a shifty runner. Had a great fall camp, too, by the way. Coaches were raving about them. 
about him during camp and, and said, we trust him just like they trust every other back. Syracuse snips out the run. Cody Roscoe has had a nose for the ball this afternoon. Third down at five. Syracuse blitzes. Vedral throws, and it's too tall. Looking for Brandon Sanders. You feel that, Mike? The momentum shift? It wasn't but a few minutes ago, a 15-yard penalty assessed to Dino Babers. Rutgers scores a touchdown. The ensuing play. It felt like things were turning their way. Now, after this punt forced by the Orange, perhaps a reversal of fortune. And Scarlet Knights roll inside the 20-yard line. So how'd we get here? Yeah, well, we'll tell you with today's game refresh brought to you by Subway. Start out with Rutgers. And then a penalty right here on Dino Babers is going to be a 15-yarder. Then the ensuing play, it's Manungai. Kyle Manungai, the touchdown. It's 7-0. And then Syracuse counters. They come right back with a deep pass to Taj Harris. And then the... Touchdown run by Sean Tucker breaking tackles and finds the end zone for seven all in the fourth third quarter, excuse me. It only seemed to be a matter of time yes. before DeVito would find Harris on some type of big play. That was a 50 yard pass down the sideline. Four man rush from the Scarlet Knights. And Darton to the sideline finds Harris, the junior from New Jersey. There has been so much talk this week, Dustin, about the connections between these two schools. And with the Orange on offense here, it's DeVito and Harris, among others, from the Garden State. Think this game doesn't mean something to those guys? Certainly no does. No doubt. They've talked about it a plenty. How to get out of that? First wave doesn't get there. And a little extra help. Chris Bleich, the left guard, trying to help keep DeVito on his feet as he takes the setback there. And as Greg Schiano built this Rutgers program back at the early part of the 2000s, when he was on the rise, Greg Robinson became the head coach at Syracuse. Things quickly turned downhill for the Orange. Schiano took full advantage of that, making his presence known in high schools around New York and New Jersey and helped build that program. So one thing about Greg Schiano is he knows how to recruit and can recruit the heck out of New Jersey. Five receivers, DeVito off the back foot, and it's incomplete. There's a clamoring for a flag, one doesn't fall, clearly the intended target. And after both teams score, now they'll both punt. Are we back into our rut again? <laughs> the first three quarters felt like it was three and out, punt, three and out, punt, penalty, penalty, fumble, punt. It's one of the most repeated cliches in the sport that coaches think a game will come down to either a big special teams play or a turnover. And with a little bit more than a quarter to go, this game is looking like it might just be that way. And I have no clue how Rutgers missed that block punt. They were in there in a hurry. It was a triumvirate of Syracuse players surrounding Crookshank on the catch. That was the site of the yellow caution. That fabric beacon on the field that will determine one team's fate and march another in the opposite direction. 
two fouls on the offense, illegal formation, offense, more than four players in the backfield. That penalty is declined. Kick catch interference, kicking team number 31, 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. I, I don't even know if he touched it, Mike. It looked like he, he was about to hit his knee. Well, just moments ago, Dustin, you were glorifying your play on special teams. So as you're coming <laughs> down there and approaching the return man, how do you avoid that contact when you're you sprinting to, full speed? You have to break down. As you approach that five-yard window and you're coming in on, on the, the returner, you have to get your feet set and break down. You cannot allow your momentum to carry in to the body. Does that knock, knock you out in the studio? Or? <laughs> There's a reason I never played football, and it's because at six foot four, 175, dripping wet, I don't think I'd be standing next to you had I attempted <laughs> to play at any type of you level. You would have been pads. a heck of a punt returner. <laughs> Rutgers starts here at the Syracuse 41, looking to break a seven-all tie in the waning minutes of the third quarter. Vendrill steps up. He gets backpack sacked. The linebacker, Marlo Wax. As Vendrill steps up in the pocket, number two is going to come around and then finish off the sack by coming back inside as he beats the block. Vettel's having a hard time getting anything. And he's trying to uh, make a check at the line of scrimmage, but it's so loud in here, Mike. He brings Manungai for protection. The running back runs out. Check down throw, Shameen Jones. He gets back not only the yardage lost on the sack, but he helps make it third and very manageable. So for what looked like it was going to be a nothing play, good effort on the outside to bring up a third and two. And here comes Johnny Leggett. Two carries today. He's only netted three yards. But the 235 pound jack of all trades is almost a sure thing for a first down. If he gets a good push, instead, he's met with one. I think he may have got about a half a yard. But he stopped short of the sticks. Correct. Fourth and now you, and short. Now you've got a fourth and short decision to make again for Shiano. To me, it's easy. It, this is less than a yard. I would come back and I'd tell Syracuse I'm running the same play. So here we go. They add some options. Langan there, Pacheco, the running back. And a whole bunch of tight ends. Pacheco takes the direct snap, disappears into a, a mountain of bodies. That is a Rutgers first down. They did, Mike, was they actually tried to disguise it and fool the defense. So Langan lined up behind the guard, and Pacheco was right behind the center. So he gets the direct snap and goes right straight ahead, which I love. No hesitation, just go and get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Bedrill back in at quarterback. Pacheco stays with him in the backfield. And Rutgers first and ten. Bedrill wants to go over the top. Bo Melton dives but does not have it. Incomplete. Boy, that was a cover two look from Syracuse. And Bo Melton gets right behind the corner in that little hole between the safety and the corner. And that ball's dropped in there. It's just got to be a little bit more touch on this football. Game of inches, Mike. When it's been fourth and in inches, Rutgers has kept the drives alive on the strength of Langan. But can Vedrill get them six? 
He wants to throw again. What he does over the middle. Pass is caught. Extra effort. And that's a Rutgers touchdown. The tight end, Giovanni Haskins, with a 30-yard grab for the score. Boy, was he wide open right down the hash. Talk about silencing the crowd. That was, wow, what a throw and catch by Haskins from Vedral. They went for Haskins in the end zone in the first half. He got called for offensive pass interference. This time he had nobody with whom to interfere with how open he was. He's at the top of the screen in a stack route. He comes down the hash marks wide open. No one's even close to him. Wide open, secures the catch, and then just carries the defender, Rob Hanna, into the end zone. Dana, what's the word from down on the field? Giovanni Haskins, he's one of those super seniors that offensive coordinator Sean Gleason is so happy that we have him on his team. He's really athletic, also good at football, but look for his role to grow week to week, and you saw it right there with that play. Yeah, no doubt. He's a big-bodied kid, six foot six. Dana, 250. Super seniors, you mentioned, getting the chance to come back, and now really finding his role in this Rutgers offense. Working on his master's degree. And Greg Schiano, as he put together his staff, got Sean Gleason, who a decade ago was the offensive coordinator at Fairleigh Dickinson, spent some time at Princeton, and then Oklahoma State. But he's a New Jersey native, as is Schiano. And that has been a big part of trying to rebuild Rutgers football. That kick dances dangerously along the sideline. It's a lot ball. Into the end zone, waved off just moments that was before the Scarlet Knights arrived. Quickly, because that was a live ball until the official blows it dead. Ooh, that was dangerous. Pena and Crookshank on kickoffs that lumbered toward the sideline, letting it go. So it's Syracuse here for one or two snaps toward the end of the third quarter. I'll try and formulate an answer. Well, here's the answer for you, Mike. He wears number three for Syracuse. Seriously, uh, Taj Harris is the dude for Syracuse. They, they've got to take some more chances to get the football in his hands. He's the one guy on the outside, I think, the, that can really, really beat this secondary. As Rutgers has done a better job bottling up Sean Tucker today. Just 54 yards, but he does have a touchdown. His backfield counterpart, Cooper Lutz, sneaks out into the flat, makes the grab with 15 seconds to go before the end of the quarter. And the Orange don't appear to be particularly inclined to take another snap here in the third, so we will go on to the fourth. From the jump today, we said it was going to be an increase in the level on campus. Last year was injured early in the season, and now back to it. He shakes off one tackle, but the second wave is what gets him. The storm was brewing, and the surge proved perilous. The safety, Avery Young, the junior, drops DeVito, loss of two. So Avery comes off the edge, scot free. And DeVito steps up and, and misses the, the sack. But Avery Young never gives up on the play. He comes back around and ends up making the tackle or sack, I should say, for about a two-yard loss. Tosh Harris just came off the field on third down and 13. Syracuse's top receiver, not an option for DeVito. As he throws up the sideline, Anthony Queeley, too tall and out of bounds. He had him. And it's fourth and 13. A couple of overthrows in back-to-back -back weeks here have plagued DeVito. Just a couple of deep throws with wide-open guys down the field. Fourteen seven Rutgers just into the fourth quarter as these teams meet for the 44th time the first time since 2012 with the Scarlet Knights 
Winners of six of the last eight. You seen James Williams to punt earlier today. This is Colby Barker. Not a good punt at all. And it doesn't look like he'll be punting again today. Wow. Somebody's got a souvenir. Rutgers has excellent field position. And Syracuse has more. Regain control. First and 10 from the Syracuse 26 after a punt of eight yards that ended up in the stands. Brookshank across the formation. He slips one tackle. It'll take a number of defenders to stop him. Good sized chunk there on first down. They, they have used him coming across the formation multiple times like that today just to give the Orange a different look. And Dustin, the difference between the opening seven drives today <laughs> and the last two has just been stark. And now with the short field, they've got an opportunity to get four, more points right now. Make it a two-score game, perhaps. The middle of the line plunge is right at the first down marker. Josh Black tackling Isaiah Pacheco. At worst, the Scarlet Knights thinking they should come away with three points here. Johnny Langan gets the call one down earlier than he's been used to today. Instead of fourth down, it's third down. Really, I think you've got two chances here to pick up this first down. You can get a touchdown this drive. Langan hands it off to Manungai, who's got the first down. Hey, Manungai's really given them a little bit of a burst here in the second half. Sparked this offense, had the touchdown run. Couple nice pickups on third down, too. Five carries, 21 yards, a touchdown for Manunga. He veers off to the right side and limited to a yard. Mikel Jones read that from the get-go. Mikel Jones, number three, top of your screen, just comes unblocked. Unblocked, no one on the offensive line sees him coming. And as soon as Vedral got the football, he had no, nothing to do with it. He had to step up and take the sack. So if, if Syracuse can get a hold here, Hold them to three, that would be, I believe, a win, Mike, considering where they started here at the 26-yard line after the botched punt by Syracuse. And Shiano wants a timeout. He just came running down the sideline, perhaps as fast as a 55-year-old guy can run to get that timeout. 11-16, fourth quarter, and a crucial snap. The nickname NJ, and plays like that, he deserves to be called that name. When we spoke to Tony White earlier in the week, the defensive coordinator for Syracuse, he said that he not only has he earned the right to be that leader, but he's no longer a player on the rise, simply one of the best linebackers in the ACC. He is the engine that drives the Syracuse defense. He really is, Dana, good, good stuff. He's the leader back there, he's vocal. Don't wanna mess with that dude. That's a bad man. He wears number three. Third down and 11. Rutgers hoping to make it a two-score game. Bedrill against a four-man rush. That will not get the job done. They need to get to the four-yard line. It does set up a nice field goal opportunity. Giovanni Haskins, the tight end, who's already hauled in a touchdown this afternoon, makes the grab. And the field goal team, Valentino Ambrosio, on for the Scarlet Knights. A 
make here will be the most separation either team has garnered today from its opponent. Pressure on the road for Ambrosio. And his kick is no good. It stays a seven point contest as he sailed it wide. And life for the Orange. Just kind of pushes it, Mike, off to the right. Sometimes those short kicks on the hash are tough to make. You think that would be just a kind of a gimme type field goal, but no. And, and Syracuse now has renewed life. And really the crowd that thought, you know, this game could be over if Rutgers gets another touchdown here. They give him the football at the 26 yard line. Uh uh. How this many Houdini acts? The Syracuse have today. It was an eight yard punt. It almost seemed as though it would be guaranteed points for They're the out. Scarlet Knights. They're out here like Chris Angel. Now, lots more coming your way tomorrow here on ACC Network. James Madison, Wake Forest, field hockey at noon Eastern, and then women's soccer down in Florida, USF, and Miami here on the ACC Network. And the ESPN app. Love watching that Aaron Matson at UNC. You got it all covered, D Fox. Rutgers has it all covered as well on the sack of DeVito. Ball is loose and it belongs to Rutgers. They snatch it right back. CJ on Yechi. Not only does he get the sack, but he comes up with the ball. Excuse me. Ahanatu is the one who knocks the football out, and then on Yechi recovers. Some big time pressure, and that. Just flips the script again, Mike. A renewed surge of life for Rutgers after a missed field goal by Ambrosio. And they retake the field with even better field position here to start this drive. It's Manungai. But he finds no running room there. With an answer, Josh Black pushes through. They are just prepared for the run. There's talk about turnover margin. Look at last season, minus seven. This year they're plus eight. They're plus five. Last week they're plus three. Today. A very opportunistic defense at Rutgers. A big third down coming up here for the Scarlet Knights. Chiano wants timeout. Will he get it? Boy, he's getting his workout in. He's running like half gassers on the sidelines to get these timeouts in. He is going to close all the rings on his workout app today with those sprints down the <laughs> sideline. Greg Chiano. Jordan, lots of folks holding their breath in central New York. Third and goal from the 11 for Rutgers. Syracuse drops seven. Vedro has to roll out. He lets it go, catch is made, and that play terminates at the nine yard line. Bo Melton, as sure hands as anybody on this roster. The field goal team on again after a missed last possession. There's just nowhere to go for Bedrill as he rolls outside the pocket, looks downfield. Good pressure again by Mikel Jones. 
and then the swarm to the football by the Syracuse defense. Great job, but how about this? It sets up the same exact kick from the same hash, Mike, as the last one that he pushed right. He missed from 29. Two yards closer. Will it make a difference? Yes. This time, Ambrosio is true. Last time, Rutgers opened his field goal. And then a missed field goal. And then a, and then a fumble. fumble. It all runs together today in a game that has had plenty of plays that these teams would like to have back. Tommy DeVito and the offense are going to get back to it. He's gone 12 of 18 for 135 yards. And where will they start? From just shy of the 25-yard line. Tommy DeVito has taken the majority of the snaps today. Never has Garrett Schrader, who had three series in the first half, let a moment escape. He's kept his arm loose on the sideline all afternoon. But DeVito, the more experienced quarterback in his fourth year in this offense, has been the more trusted one today for Dino Babers. Avery Young hit DeVito late. They're going to have this in plus territory now because of the late hit out of bounds. And I love the decision by DeVito to. Play. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds, defense. Number two, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, Avery Young's got to lay off there. Quarterback's trying to get out of bounds. See right here, he's, he's going to go out of bounds. You got to let up, let up. He pushes it again when he's out of bounds. That's just. Lack of discipline right there, Mike. Both teams have been burned by 15 yard penalties. That there for Rutgers, one against Dino Babers earlier. They like the play design so much, they went back to a similar look. And that gets them nowhere. Syracuse is going to have to hurry because this, I mean, obviously, this game was tied at zero at halftime. 10 points feels like three scores at this point in the game. You're gonna have to find a way to get, get down here and get some points right now in this drive. Max Manning in at tight end. He provides some extra blocking. DeVito was off on the throw. That was just behind Sherrod Johnson. You know, even though it's behind Johnson, he comes back with his hands. I, I still think you can make that catch. It's a tough catch. But it hit both hands. There have been moments today of equal blame, both on DeVito and the receiving is it, core. Is this catchable right here? Yep. I think so. Yeah. SU has more passing yards than Rutgers. More importantly, the Scarlet Knights up by 10. A sideline wobbler caught out of bounds by Anthony Queeley. DeVito was trying to hit Taj Harris, who was running down the seam. He was open for a moment, but the pressure comes and gets in DeVito's face, and he, he's forced to just basically throw this football away as he sees the defender come in there. What do you think, Mike? Would you go for it here? And understandably, the fans in orange and blue are not pleased with the decision to punt here. 7.25 to go. Especially as well as your defense has played. I mean, you're not giving the football back to, to Rutgers in plus territory. For what it's worth, James Williams has come back to punt after Colby Barker had the eight-yard punt earlier. And that stops at about the 11-yard line. So it's going to have to be on the Syracuse defense after that decision, if they want to make it a comeback effort, they knock off Rutgers in the first meeting between these two teams since 2012 with the Scarlet Knights. 
perhaps off to a 2 and 0 start Dustin the last time they did that 2014 their last bowl game they went to the quick lane bowl they won it that was their last winning season and they could certainly be 3 and 0 heading into that game at the big house they should be 3 and 0 heading to the big house and then of course Ohio State at home Ohio State goes down today to the Oregon Ducks 35 28 big loss for the Buckeyes Ryan Day's first regular season loss by the way this is Pacheco you imagine we'll see a lot of handoffs here. Tick, tick, tick. Is what Rick Shiano wants to see. Greg Shiano has squared off as a head coach or as an assistant with so many of the head coaches in modern Syracuse football history. Whether it was Coach Mack, Pasqualoni, Greg Robinson. You name it, Doug Marone as well, Doug and Marone. now Dino Babers. The rivalry that built over many decades. It's the 44th all-time matchup. Rutgers winners of six of the last eight, trying to make it seven out of nine. And send the orange even at one and one. All right, third down. Do we see 21? Johnny Langan going to come in the game or no? Bedrill stays on the field with a glance to the sideline. The trusty Pacheco at his side. Who's got more on third and one? And the answer appears to be Pacheco. You wonder if Dino Babers questions himself now about punting. Well, there were certainly many who questioned him right. as they no, punted. I understand that. I probably would have gone for it in that situation. I know it's fourth and ten, but you're down two scores, and there's seven minutes to go in the game. And in that case, is saying you trust your defense a strike against your offense because you didn't believe they could get it done? That's also true. Rutgers at a minimum here will take a couple minutes off the clock. Pacheco's running hard. That was a bruising carry from Pacheco. They call him Pop. And the, name. the evidence is good reason. Yeah, he pops right here. For the junior who came into this game with the 11th most rushing yards in the history of Rutgers football. It's a good run. The coaches were telling us about his mentality. It's like a defensive player playing offense. He's physical. He wants to deliver the boom on defenses. In fact, Sean Gleason said he's probably the best player they have on offense. A back who relishes contact. This is Melton. This play design has been crookshank more often than not today by the Scarlet Knights. They keep the clock winding, 4.15 to go. I'll tell you what, Mike, they're about two first downs away from just walking off as a winner. Syracuse does have three timeouts left. And when do they start to use them? Now? I think now, after first down, if you get a, if you get a uh, minimal gain, or a loss. So they use their first, stopping the clock at 4.06 to go. This game is not over yet, but certainly a decisive play. Earlier in this half, let's take a look at our MVP of the game, brought to you by Sport Clips, and it's Giovanni Haskins. Giovanni Haskins has three receptions and a big touchdown in this game. Well, Kyle Manungai doing his best Giovanni Haskins yeah. impersonation. <laughs> He's been great coming out of the backfield yeah. as well. Him and Pacheco. Again, I think for a second straight week, Dustin on offense for both teams, but we're talking about Rutgers at the moment. Nobody burst away as the star of the show. A collective effort has to be reason for optimism that you don't need to rely on just one player. 
all three phases have made plays in this game. Defense has got turnovers. The offense has scored when they, I mean, 17 is not, not enough in most games, but it's enough today. And your special teams has played well. Defensive line collapses there to stop the run. And they use their second timeout. So the choice to punt on fourth down by Dino Babers is going to be one thing that gets highlighted right. after the fact, but it's a series of things leading up to that that made that a pivotal decision where they didn't come through where they wanted to. Well, just think about the second down throw to Sherrod, uh, Sherrod Johnson. He's behind him a little bit, but he gets his hands on it. If he catches that, that's probably a six-yard gain-ish, maybe seven, I don't know. And then, of course, you'd have the fourth and three, and you'd go for that. I think because it was fourth and ten, coach just felt like that was a little bit too risky. But now you're using your timeouts because Rutgers has not been able to be stopped on this drive. They get a first down, it's probably over. The Orange with one timeout remaining. Dino Babers takes it here to stop the clock, brings up third down and long for Rutgers. And we go to the studio for an update, Jordan. Early on in Clemson, South Carolina State, the Tigers looking for their first touchdown of the season. Big Cinco, DJ, Uyunglele, find six. Clemson on the board, leading seven, nothing. Back to you, Mike, Dustin. Jordan, once we wrap up here, we'll get you to that Clemson game on the ACC Network, the third of our four today. My cousins, Dustin Fox, Dana Boyle. It's been a treat to be inside the Carrier Dome today to watch Syracuse and Rutgers, the Scarlet Knights, third and 13, and hand it off here and lead close to another minute away before they have to kick, assuming that Syracuse gets a stop. Guessing that uh, Rutgers is not going to put this football in the air. I've been surprised by a lot today, but I don't expect to be surprised yeah. by a pass. I think it would surprise Syracuse. Anticipated handoff. And a mass of many men helps make that forward progress to about the 40 yard line. This will be like under three minutes yep. when they get the football back. Down 10. I'm Dino Babers. I'm talking to Tommy DeVito on the sidelines, and I'm telling him right now we got to go fast. I'd be calling the first three plays right now. Get up to the line as fast as possible. Get down there, and if you have to, take the three points. You know, take the three points and then try for the onside kick. Time of possession can be a misleading number, Dustin. But in the second half, it's meant opportunity. Rutgers has held the ball for more than 20 minutes in the second half to just under six minutes by the Orange. And Syracuse regains possession with 2.55 to go. They'll need a quick strike if they hope for a comeback effort. To be led by Tommy DeVito. The Orange tracking toward one and one. They'll take on Albany. Liberty, a dangerous squad with who oh. they've got at quarterback. Malik Willis? Yes. Oh my goodness. He is. Not at a Power 5 school, but he is a Power 5 quarterback. Then a trip to Florida State, Wake, and a much-anticipated matchup with Clemson on ESPN on October 15th. Entering the season, SU picked last out of seven teams in their division in the ACC. Clemson atop there, UNC atop the other division in the Atlantic Coast Conference. DeVito down by 10, 
and down behind his offensive line. Julius Turner making the most of his 33rd career start. Captain of this defense, captain that's vocal, making a big play there, big stop on first down. Clean pocket, the running back Tucker. I'll tell you what, checkdowns are not going to get you back in this game. Do you think they took enough deep shots to Taj Harris? No, I, I, I would have taken more. I take one right now here in third down. I, I'd max protect. You know, they're going to go 10 personnel without a tight end. I'd, I'd bring an extra tight end in and, and, and max it up. The throw is underneath again, and I'm not really sure what the strategy is here. I mean, Rutgers is going to give you that three yard check down every time. Turning point was what for you in this game? Uh, probably the, the forced fumble and the recovery after the, the shank punt. I would have said the shank punt had they got the field goal there, but I mean, they come right back and get the football inside the 20 again. He's got to throw it or take off. Well, he does run. He gets tripped up, has a first down, stops the clock at 120. That will run again when they get to the line after a gain of 16 by DeVito, who showed the wheels here, but it's been a little bit too much too late. Taking too much time. They got to go. To the sideline, incomplete. So like much. They're, they're not running any routes past the sticks. You got to take some shots here if you want to at least give yourself a chance. Otherwise, it's performative offense. But for the second straight week, Dustin, Rutgers has made the most of the opportunities presented in all three phases. They've done a great job. I mean, this this uh, Shiano team is, is well coached. They are well rounded. They don't have the best offense. I'll, I'll admit that. But I think their special teams and defense has come up big. <laughs> We're just going to run out of time, Mike. Syracuse will drop to 1-1. One and one, And Rutgers will improve to 2-0. and oh For the first time since 2014. Picked off. And kneeled down on the interception by Max Melton. Who had a pick six last week and seals a Rutgers victory inside the Carrier Dome. This, this football is just poorly thrown. He's trying to get it on the outside to Jarvion Howard in the flat. And, and Max Melton's like, all right, thank you. He had a pick six last week against Temple. Now he has another interception back to back weeks. For Vedral. Tell you what, the state of New Jersey is going to be very happy after bringing Greg Schiano back three wins a year ago and a perfect start. You know. Two for two in as many weeks for Greg Schiano and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. 17 to 7. They will leave the Carrier Dome winners. Fun game to, to call, Mike. Good job out of you. I thought it was going to be a 0-0 game for the entire <laughs> rest of the game, like that Frank Beamer game way back when, but no. Rutgers shows up in the second half, makes enough plays.